Time to add some mud effects to the Beast Killer. Uh, I've got an array of products here and I'll just try to explain the process. I don't do this very often, I'm no far from being an expert of doing this. Whenever I do mud, it always ends up looking like, well, like it's had a mud bath, not a subtle mud thing. So I'm going to try to very slowly layer this in. And the process I'm going to use first is I'm going to use some pigments to just change up the values and the, the different sort of tones I've got going underneath the the lower hole there, if you can see that, I'll just turn this around. That's a bit darker on that side, as you can see. So I'm just going to lay down, because that's just paint, that's just matte Tamiya paint. And also on the on the front there, and if we go completely underneath, I'm going to lay down some pigments using Pigment Fixer to basically just show some dried mud, dried earth effects. Uh, not, to, not build it up too much to start with, in terms of texture, just uh, colours and particularly on the back plate. All the references I see, this back plate just gets com completely covered with mud. That's why they remove the fenders, and that's why I've removed the fenders on mine. So that'll be the first stage, and we'll see how I go, slowly build it up one side at a time. The next one is I might add some... I bought this last night at my... or the other night at my hobby night. Uh, AK, um, wet splattered met wet mud. It's quite a liquidy sort of material, and I've seen you can use... you can add some plaster to it. Uh, yeah, that's not a specimen, <laughs> it's got plaster in it. Uh, add some plaster in it, give it a bit bit of thickness, and I've also got some 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 fibres and that to put in there. I sometimes have used this in the past, Tamiyo soil effect. I may not use this, it's, it's actually quite gritty, it's really good. I might put that inside the tracks, because it seems to stick to the tracks really, really well. And then you can um, paint over the top of it, or use pigments over the top of it to change the colours. So... Last thing is the tools, and I know this is getting quite long, but you know I want to explain the process. I just use the little spatula for the for the text stuff, so I probably won't use that. Just a nice stiff uh, hog hair or you know artist sort of brush there to do the to do the mud and the and the splatter because you can just flick it like that and you get some nice effects. Uh, for my pigments, I use these. They're almost like makeup brushes. Okay, I use this one, the fine one, to to place the pigments, and this one to blend them in nice long pipette to get the pigment fixer out and a um i don't know what that brush is for we'll just add it in there okay let's get started and it's finished now I've, I've just done one side just to show you uh just to do the process first so that's one side almost done i've done a little bit underneath you can see where some of that pigment fixers run a bit and i'm going to do the other side so basically what i did was just uh yeah i added the dry mud pretty much almost everywhere. There's a few gaps missing there. I might go over again just to do the light stuff. And then I use the Vallejo, uh, what's it called? The natural, it's, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, the natural umber. I really like this color. It's, um, it's brown with a little bit of green in it. So it gives us you know, like a natural green sort of effect. And then I did the, uh, the, the dark mud, but that's not going to be the, uh, the final layer. It's going to be, I'm going to add those splatter effects next and i might even add another uh, wash on that but that's where we are so far like i said you can see some of those tide marks from the uh, pigment fixer that's easy to fix just by adding more pigment fixer it's not completely dry it's been sitting there an hour or two but yeah i'll do the other side and show you the finished result before we get to the next stage show you how i do the pigments on this side so i start with the dry mud and i'm just basically going to place a few bunches up there in the corners, getting behind the idler wheels and around the back here. This is fairly light stuff, so I'm going to have this just spreading over the whole area. So I just use this little brush to put them in there, but then I use my blending brush to actually damp them down. So you can see how that spreads, spreads the pigment out over a wider area. And you can actually scrub it into the paint. This is why having a matte surface is important when you're using pigments. So I'm getting a nice sort of dried mud effect there. A few of the pigments are still sitting on the surface, which means there's a fair bit there, especially around those idler wheels. That's fine, that's good. So next I'll layer in a little bit of the natural umber. I like, really like this Vallejo one, so I'll put this down next. 
if I can open the bottle. If I can open the bottle, there we go. <laughs> okay, so that's a nice sort of greeny brown effect. And again, I can actually use this just to make up some some bulk. So I'm just tapping it in there. You can see I'm just turning the brush over and I'm tapping it and I don't mind it settling on these suspension arms. Again, just tapping it in there. I really want a lot around the, the front and rear uh, suspension and idler bits because that's where a lot of the mud's going to naturally accumulate. So it's just a case of tapping away, tappity tappity, and flinging it all over the... Well, that's not too bad. That's a happy accident, that one. And I'm not going to tamp that one in because I want that to have a bit more bulk. So we'll put the lid on this before we move to the last one, and that's a dark mud. That's quite a dark, dark mix, which I can actually make a bit darker um, later on. Again, same option, same procedure, I should say. Although I do notice some of these MIG pigments do have little white flecks stuck in them, but you can always cover them up with a bit of an enamel wash later. I'll probably put a dark wash over the top of this just to drag it all down. So with the dark mud, I want that to initially I can get it on the model so that oh, you can't not even on camera get in there all right just have to shove it in there so obviously you want that darker mud to to go there now the other trick for this is if i just turn this a little bit see how the other side of the suspension arms here weren't done so this is the time to do it because we're talking about horizontal surfaces here which is important for the uh, pigment fixer so i'm just going to liberally cover that so they actually get a bit of coverage because you'll forget about them I've actually done the underside of these ones when I did the other side all right that that'll do for the first layer I'm now going to use my pigment fixer okay and I just use my long pipette and I just want to do capillary action so let's see how this works for the bigger blobs just want to dab it on like that and I'll show you a trick in a minute to get even more volume so don't flood it totally, wait for that to move along and just little drops. The less fixer you use, the better because it dries quicker. Uh, this sometimes takes an hour or more to dry or even longer. The other side's still not fully dry yet. So, um, uh, and then also do those other arms. So just put a dab on each one. Corners just to let that run on the capillary action. I've got a few more spots to to do. That should that should zoom go in. Okay, so while it's still wet like that, and you can see very cleanly going off the cameras, let's add a bit more layer. So I'm just going to add a bit more dark mud, and that'll sit on top of the the wet enamel, th uh, enamel. I don't know what sort of what sort of chemicals in that pigment fixer. Someone smarter than I, with a chemical degree, probably knows what's in it. I'll ask Will Patterson. He'll probably know. So I'm just going to dab it on like that, and also on those other suspension arms, and that'll get caught by the uh, the pigment fixer. So I'll leave that alone and let it set aside. I've done a similar process to the tracks. You can see that I've done the top of the tracks there in various layers, the three layers. So you've got to use use the same um, mix for your tracks that you do for your lower hull. And um, I'll add some more to the, to the rear of the wheels later. But you can see this is the pigment fix is still wet, so I've added some around the sides there. Uh, but this top layer is nice and dry, if you can see that. So I put the, the dry mud in the inside of the wheel of the track and then the wet mud on the outside, that's I assume how it accumulates. Uh, and then I've done a little bit here on the um, on one or two of the road wheels. I don't want to do all of them. I'm just going to splat a little bit more on that that wheel there, just to give it a bit more uh, bit more volume. And then if you compare that with the other set, okay, you can get it in camera. So that's the other set with at the pigment. Okay, so you can see it adds a lot more variation, a lot more telling a story of what's going on there. So you're getting a, a real sort of, um, yeah, a story, you know, <laughs> this, this tank's gone through mud. 
All right, I'll apply the pigments to, to this, let that one dry, and then I can finally put the tracks on the beast. As you can see, I've put the mud on one side, the splatter effect stuff from AK, and uh, yeah, it's quite an interesting product. I've also um, added some plaster and made a, a mix, a thicker mix to deposit around the, uh, the wheels here, and the, it's not the wheels, the struts. Okay, and I've started to splatter. Should try not to touch it there. Uh, I've started to splatter the um, the underside, so this is a bit of a process, and that's quite a dark colour. Try to wet colour, so I'm trying to do that. It's just gone through a massive puddle. Uh, I've got a couple of brush marks there. I need to blend out. So so far it works well, blending it in with uh, with a bit of water. So I've just got water and a brush just to make some streaks there to come down as the mud, you know, is flung up to the fender and then it just comes down and starts to accumulate around those struts where it's where I'm thinking and it's where I'm hoping like I said I'm no expert on this but I really wanted to get this mud sort of effect and then on the rear I've only done half started put some big spiders there um, using the brush it's a little bit too uncontrolled I think I might switch to say a toothpick or something uh, like they do on the, on the instructional video and try to make them a bit subtler but I really need a lot of accumulation on those fenders there so I'm going to try that Soon I'll let that bottom stuff uh, dry first and then get to it. And I'm going to use the same mix uh, on the tracks. So if I just get the tracks. So I'm going to apply some, some of this wet mud on the tracks there and uh, yeah on the outside there. So hopefully we're getting close to getting these on and together. Okay, you can see I'm getting a good splatter effect there. I'm using a thicker brush to do the splatter. See if I can get that on camera. Okay, so I want to concentrate it here where the fenders have been removed. Obviously, I'm using a, a nice thick number four or five round brush. So I lightly dip it in water, take most of the moisture off, and then just lightly dip it in the splatter. I'm just using my finger because why not? I'll test it first. Yeah, I'm getting some nice ones. So I'm just going to try to get it in this corner and then just build up the edge there see if I can get it yep we're getting it up there so you can see how it's starting to get up but the fenders have been removed all that splatter it's getting on the back of the fuel tank and we might just do one over the whole vehicle <laughs> gotta make that noise when you do this okay all right I'm just gonna keep going along this is quite boring but it's interesting to to do i'm trying not to go overboard but i really want to get this effect of the of this back really really muddied up here so i'm going to swing around to the front and do the same to the front and i'm also going to put some more splatter on the sides and i've got to splatter the all the tracks as well so stay tuned so the mud effects have all dried up and they've unexpectedly or expectantly dried fairly glossy you can probably see the reflection there it's all those effects uh, I've done well, but um, yeah, a little bit too glossy for my liking. So I'm going to hit that with a bit of a flat coat, and maybe not so much on the on the tracks. I might leave some of that there. But uh, yeah, it's time to um, put this all back together and get on to the last stage of weathering, which is using oils. So I'm going to hit that with a flat coat. I might use my go-to Tamiya rattle can because it's just lazy, and I can just hit that straight away, and then um. Yeah, now we get into the, the final bit, which is the oils, and I'll explain that process when we get to it. Alright, I've got the tracks on the Beast Killer. As you can see, the tracks went on nicely. The flat coat has dulled down that mud a little bit. I might add a little bit more uh, variation to that later, but let's get into the final part of this, which is the oils. So I've got my oil palette here, just going for five colours. I've got the 502 Snow White. Uh, which is a bit of a duller white than a normal titanium white or something like that you get from the Winton. Uh, I've got the raw umber, which is uh, here, this color, nice black, blacky brown sort of color here. I'll use that to uh, enhance the mud effects, to do shadows, to do, might, might apply some more washes. I've got sap green, which is a more um, saturated green color. You can just see them there. And I've done a couple of mixes already. and. What you do to make green darker is you don't necessarily add black or brown to it, you add blue to it. So I've got Thalo Blue, which is extremely powerful um, as, a, as a color. And I've just added a touch of it there to, uh, to darken it. And I've used that to just 
uh, you know, just make the shadows a little bit more intense and a little bit colder, but uh, again, more intense. And then for that light green there, which I'm going to expand into a series of light greens, I'm just uh, playing around here, we use cadmium yellow. So instead of using white to straight up lighten the sap green, you use a yellow first. That takes you closer to a lighter green. I did add a little bit of white. You can probably see that just there to, uh, to play around with the colors. So I'll be using that, and I have already, if you look on the top of the... Uh, the tank there on those rivets and some of those hatches. I've already started to play around with uh, lightening up on that cell and that hinge right there. So that's what I'll be doing with that. Uh, yeah, so that's the basic palette and I've got my blending brushes here, a nice flat wide filbert, a narrow filbert, a couple of uh, O rounds. I prefer to apply the oil very, very small amounts and I've got a number one for doing more of the sort of the mixing on the palette, which is just a piece of cardboard. Last element is some odorless uh, paint thinner. Use this to clean, thin the whole lot. Uh, it's a very benign process. It's great. So I'm going to get stuck into this. So the first thing I'm doing here is doing some highlights by just uh, doing some light green there. Um, I use two brushes. I use one brush I use for lights, one for, for darks. So what I'm going to, what I've done already is I've hit some of these, these tops here and I'm just going to go around and just apply a little bit of oil to some edges there. Uh, to the top of this bracket don't need a lot and I just want to do the, the the highlights here just to make it pop a little bit more so around this edge here these rivets now if I want to do an area sort of effect then I might concentrate on this vent cover so I'm just going to stipple in I think you can just see that and stipple that in and then with a the filbert I'll just spread it out so now I've got a much lighter value there on that I can do a little bit more it's quite a yellow green I've got going on there on that brush which is fine I just want to diffuse that by just stamping it dum, 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 like that and you got to make the pretty noise as well and I'll also do it on this mantlet cover I want to have a lighter edge on this side and then I'm going to put a shadow in here so I'm just going to work this in a bit more on the brush It's a little bit too yellow for mine, so I'm just going to... Mix in a bit more white. And I'm just sort of dry spreading that around. much much more interesting edge happening there so I'm just going to go around the top of this putting in those highlights so I've put some burnt umber uh, raw umber I should say around the um, this hatch here and I've laid in some raw umber and some sap green around this mantle cover so I'll just show you what happens when you just blend this in Okay, so I'm trying to create some stains there. Let's apply a little bit more around the edge. And feather it out. So now we're really changing the character of uh, this top, top bit. So moving to the rear of the, uh, the Beast Killer. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just adding a few washes. This is one of the great things about uh, the oils is I can thin the palette down with the, the odorless thinner so I've just thinned this uh, quite dark sap green you see how that's getting nice and thin and I can make another wash if I want to enhance the washes that are already there or replace them with a different colour uh, so I just want to touch some of these elements back here to give them some grease sort of stains and things so that's a combo of uh, I'm using a, a sap green with the phthalo blue and I'm using uh, you can see I've 
got really into the the uh, was it the burnt up raw umber as well uh, and yeah I've increased some shadows around the grills I'm gonna I've also done some around the exhaust as well and I've almost done be careful not to touch I've put some more mud on the back of course you need more mud and I've done some streaking and you might be able to see some blue there there's quite a blue green streaking down the back on that so I'm almost done the last thing to do is just to go around with the um, no, no, I have, I'm missing completely. I've got to do the whitewash at the front. I've hit hit some of the surf, the corners with the uh, and the barrel. I've worked on the barrel as well. That's just the raw umber again, just to give it a because uh, of the reference photo. I've got the muzzle looks quite black, so I've just done that. So I'm just going to finish the uh, the rear here, and I might put some effects on the. And I've got mud on my fingers, <laughs> so I have to reapply the mud again. Uh, I'll put some more effects here on the exhaust. And I might increase the highlights. A few of the highlights that I put in, the chipping has disappeared, so I'll put them back. Now we get to the point where I want to enhance the whitewash. So at the moment I'm looking at this, I mean, it looks quite varied. It's really interesting, but the whites need to come out a little bit more. So particularly at the top. So I've got my Snow White here, the 502, which is a little bit dirty. I have dirtied it up with a touch of green and a little bit of yellow. So I'm just using that to make some highlights and I'm just adding bits here and there and then I'll very very subtly blend them in so as you can see I'm just putting them there like that and then out on the edges and then my next plan is to then um, dar uh, not darken, dirty up the, um, the whitewash again and put that down the bottom so you get the impression that the all the mud and the stuff is you know has, I don't know, rain whatever has just pulled pulled all the stuff down so I'm just going to blend that in very carefully and where's my blending brush it's disappeared there it is okay so I'm just going to just stab it in and I just realized my blending brush is dirty <laughs> so I have to clean it so here's a good thing for if you ever get um, make a mistake with oils just simply wipe it off so it's all gone now all right so I'll have to reapply that uh, white stuff that I just put on there and then this is why you, I should probably have two blending brushes on the go because that was I was using that to to blend in some stuff on the um, on the engine deck so take two let's see if this works uh, to be better so I'm just very lightly spreading that around It's changing up the surface there and it will take a few applications this um this white is fairly transparent so there it's um, slowly changing so I'll just do that for a bit and then I'll switch to the darker the darker white now I'm going to move to the the lower bit of the whitewash so I've made a bit of a, a creamy brown sort of white here out of the the raw umber and a little bit of yellow so I'm just going to apply that down in here which is, might be a bit difficult to see because of all the mud splatter I've put in um, but I think it'll just change up the color just slightly and I might just put some of this stuff sort of you sort of dry brush it on really uh, underneath so under that, that headlight and that horn and also underneath just to make a faint shadow faint outline underneath the visor slot there probably can't see that too well on camera but um, I'm trying to get some more variation in that whitewash so it looks worn and tacky and sort of like they've sort of forgotten about it and because we're now coming into the muddy spring um, but yeah it's all starting to wear off and starting to look a bit not too good so I'm just going to enhance some of these whites again. The paint's a little bit wet here, which is, which is working in my favour because I can just wet blend that in straight away. And I think I'll call that good. Uh, yeah, just want to hit the tops there. I think I'll leave it at that and then um, just do the final bits and we can finally get this thing finished. The Beast Killer is done. I had a lot of fun uh, getting back into doing this tank or tank killer or whatever you want to call it. And I really hope you enjoyed this multi-part series. It's not something I wanted to do at the, at the start. I just wanted to have an experiment with the black and white painting. And now it's turned into something 
bigger and better. Uh, I think I've done okay with the mud effects. The final photos here sort of show what I was trying to get to. I always seem to overdo it with this sort of stuff, but I think I'm getting getting better at it. I, I, I've achieved what I wanted to, and that's a, a, um, a winter slash spring mud sort of effect on a Soviet vehicle, World War II. So I'm glad you uh, watched through to the end here with me, and um, yeah, enjoy these photos, and I'd love to hear you your thoughts and your comments, is it um, too much or too little, or too weird, <laughs> uh, too complicated? How is the video? Leave me your thoughts and ideas and any criticisms or anything I can do better for the next one. But until next time, happy modeling and cheers.